What up crew? In this episode, we're gonna get a behind the scenes tour at the National Museum of Computing of the bomb machine that was used to help crack the Enigma code of World War II. And the crazy thing is, it still works. Let's check it out. Joe P. Kirchman here, and this t-shirt segment is brought to you by birds, because at the Bletchley Park Museum, there's a quote by Churchill describing the code breakers as, the geese that laid the golden eggs but never cackled. The museum gives a real good insight on how the code breakers lived, and there's a beautiful mansion on the grounds as well. But one of the more interesting parts of their museum is a room on the pigeons of war. These little flying messengers were actually released from a garage barn right next to where the code breakers were trying to crack Hitler's Enigma machine. Although there's not a lot of evidence to say that these pigeons actually delivered the messages to where they needed to go, the British government took it very seriously if you happen to fool around with any of these ideas. They even killed old Louis Barrier for releasing some pigeons that he wasn't supposed to. But enough about birds, let's get to the good stuff. If you go up the hill and look for a short building that says the National Museum of Computing, you will find one of the most amazing collections of electronics ever assembled. Their most recent project, and I cannot emphasize how cool this is, is the rebuilding of Alan Turing's bomb computer. Because this machine could compute and store information, I'm technically calling it a computer. Now there are many of these three rotor bomb machines built, around 200 of them. But the British only kept about 50 of them after the war and destroyed the rest. The Allies wanted to keep these things secret even after the war, and there's a very big possibility that they used these during the Cold War. The machine is somewhat simple, yet amazingly complex. They had over 12 miles of wire, 36 sets of rotor drums, and weighed an actual ton, 2,000 pounds. Now, Alan Turing and Tommy Flowers get a lot of credit for inventing the first computers, but we cannot forget about the Polish, specifically Marian Rajewski, Henryk Zaleski, and Jerzy Rozki, who escaped from Poland and then gave all of their secrets to Bletchley Park. To have the first computer still working is just amazing. You gotta check it out for yourself. Also, if you notice, the majority of people using these machines and code breaking were women. And they were actually referred to as computers because of their job description. Now this is just in one of the rooms that they have, but there are so many more. There's an entire section on calculators, slide rulers, and old adding machines, and they even have a couple of the now popular Curta calculators. They are still in working condition, and if they break, there's still a wonderful poster of the schematic for how to repair it. There are much better videos that go in depth on the National Museum of Computing's website, and I'll link that down below in the description. Then it's off to the personal computer room, which is one of the most varied collections in the world. There are all sorts of different types, dating from the 1950s to the present day. And most of these are still usable. It really helps put into perspective how young this industry is, and brings you down memory lane on computers that we grew up with. For me, it was the old Apple IIe that we used in second grade. But over in Britain, they actually had a BBC Special Edition computer with a pretty sweet logo. In another room, there are three of the oldest and still working computers. There's the HEC1, and my personal favorite name, the Harwell Decatron computer, also known as the Witch. This beast can still compute and store data which is more than I can say if I was over 70 years old. They have quite a collection of these old valves, which there are only a limited supply in the world. So when they run out, I guess I'll have to 3D print something to keep these computers going. But the museum has plenty of spares in the meantime. This bad boy is used on the EDSAC computer built at the University of Cambridge in 1947 to 1949, and actually won some Nobel Prizes and basically helped father in the modern age of digital computing. But we cannot overlook the room that houses Colossus. This is one of the first computers ever created and was used to help break the German Lorenz cipher machine. Now, to put this computing power into perspective, the Enigma machine had three wheels, while the Lorenz machine has 12. Oh, and I guess if you want to tie in with the whole bird flight kind of theme, they actually have a room which has a live feed to the air traffic controller at Heathrow Airport. 
You can go see in real time all of the planes coming and going, as well as zoom around the airport with a bird's eye view. These machines were used in the tower, and when Heathrow upgraded their equipment, they were kindly donated to the museum. It's pretty wild to see how the past computers laid the groundwork to the current technology that we use today. Oh, and on a last side note, the museum of course has a game room. Tons of retro games, but my favorite is the original Space Invaders arcade set with all of the old school buttons and projection system. I'm going to be building an arcade in a future project, and this was some great inspiration. I want to give a massive shout out to the National Museum of Computing. They are the coolest museum in all of London. Although technically it's not in London, I know. Alan Turing's bomb machine is going to be open to the public in about two weeks. So I'll put some more links in the description down below. You don't want to miss out on that. Tell them Joe sent you and give yourself plenty of time. You're going to love every minute. Now, the only way to end this thing is with a quote. Thank <laughs> you.